my name is Lisa Goldstein. This is Wild Work Farm in Keene Valley, New York. We are a um, diversified vegetable farm primarily. We also grow blueberries and have some fruit trees. We sell to a local farmer's market, which is kind of just up the road. That's about a third of our income. Um, a third of it is what we call a market share, which is basically a free choice CSA. And then um, a third is wholesale, which includes like small retailers, um, restaurants, grocery stores. We lease three acres and we grow on about an acre and a half a year. This year it was five plus me. So one full-time um, year round, pretty much. Um, two full-time seasonal and two part-time seasonal. Been, this is the end of my sixth season on this land, but I started farming here when I was 14. I worked for my cousin Rob, who has an adjacent farm operation, and I worked with him for five seasons, basically all through high school and into college, and then worked on farms through college and went out west after college. So it's been for a lot of, you know, I'm 39, so um, 25 years of working on farms, basically. Well, we were washing in this barn, this old barn, um, and it just didn't feel uh, like we could get it super clean. The flow wasn't great. It wasn't super ergonomic. Um, it wasn't great for the building that we were using water in there. Um, I kind of anticipated that FISMA rules could apply to us eventually, and I just didn't see a way to like make that work in that space. And I just thought that we could be a lot more productive um, if we had a better space. Yeah, we could, you know, it's not insulated or heated, so, and we grow year round greens. So I was moving into the greenhouse, which was terrible. You know, I just like not set up for success, like not a great use of that space. Um, didn't, again, no flow. So that was like the number one, just felt like we couldn't move produce in an efficient manner. Um, you know, the floor wasn't level, so we couldn't wheel things. We couldn't clean properly. Um, it just, it just felt really, really inefficient. I'm very focused on like staffing. We live in a really rural area. It's hard to like keep find and retain staff here because, you know, it's people thought of this as a young person's game, and there's not like a lot of big cities here to attract young people. So. Um, and there's not a lack of housing, so that's a big problem. But I think like the trend, making the transition from like the way farm employment used to be when I started, which was like a lot of internships, a lot of barter, a lot of like overworked, underpaid, to like kind of making these jobs, trying to work towards these jobs, being more similar to other jobs. That's been like a big thing that I've been trying to work on. Um, I think like my two greatest mentors were, were at Horton Road Organics in Oregon and then I worked for an urban farm in Vancouver, British Columbia and both farms had like, were pretty small. Not, the Oregon farm was five acres, so not tiny, but um, you know, had really big emphasis on like high quality, building strong customer relationships and kind of that's kind of like formed the core of what I, like what resonates with me in building this business. So yeah, so I've kind of focused on that. It started out, we worked actually with a friend who's an architect and we, my original dream was like, oh, I want to build like a whole nother barn because I had seen all these projects that you profiled and I was like, how great would that be? Like have this big warm space. Like I just thought, you know, I just fantasized about, you know, we were, we were just lack warm space here in general. Um, so I fantasized about all the good things that that could be used for. Um, and as we kind of dug into it, it was like, became very clear that this would become a really expensive project. And not only that, I don't own the land here. So it would become an expensive project that I would never own and potentially never be able to sell to anyone um, because I'm a tenant and my extended family owns this property. Um, and they were a little hesitant about, you know, building a whole new structure. I mean, I think open to it, but so then I had friends come and look at the barn and we talked about retrofitting the barn, but it was just like, it just didn't make sense. It's got a really low ceiling. We would lose height with insulation. It would be expensive to do that also. A few people had told us about, had helped us start thinking about shipping containers. And when I worked in Vancouver on the urban farm, we actually used shipping containers for a lot of different things, including our cooler. Um, so I was familiar with using them, but I was like, oh, they're so narrow. Like, I just like wasn't excited about that. 
Um, and that winter we went to Copenhagen and they use shipping containers for everything there. It's really cool. There's a lot of cool housing and stuff. So I, I was like re-inspired. I was like, okay, like I can think outside the box and like this could work. So a friend of ours introduced us to this guy, Ed Marin, who um, used to work for Nomad, which retrofits like Airstream trailers, but he also is like a Air Force guy, has like a military background. Um, and he has a company in Plattsburgh um, that retrofits shipping containers, mostly for restaurants. So I started the conversation with him about this project. And um, we had him, we had a friend who's a general who was kind of like our builder. Um, and we started kind of brainstorming. Um, and then, yeah, the project kind of took off. It was like, you know, it took a lot of back and forth. There's still things that I want to change. You know, there's definitely things that aren't perfect, but it's way more efficient. Um, it's, it, we're able to keep it really clean. We use it as our CSA pickup. I mean, it was expensive, but it's like, I don't have the expertise to do that. I mean, I don't have a business partner. My husband is a builder. He works off the farm full time. It's like, we don't have time to do that. It's like, we've just gotten to the point where it's just worth it to just like pay someone else, you know? Yeah. And he has like this massive warehouse where he has access to these different, he's like just aware of materials. He can fabricate things. Like I don't have those skills, you know? It's just like too much, um, but yeah, it was it was really cool to work with him. I think it was just like we've just gotten to the point in our marriage and our <laughs> lives where it's like better for him for us to farm out some of these projects. I actually wrote out a detailed budget and I was trying to remember it when the shipping container was like about 40. The um, slab and groundwork I want to say was like 10. The roof was 30. So. And then there was the electrical and then there was the um, the like cooling and heating, which came in separately. So it was over a hundred. I want to say it was like a hundred to 120. But the other thing that went into our thinking was like, in theory, although it looks difficult now, it's like, I could move that chipping container out of here and sell it, you know? Yeah. And like, um, it, you know, so, and it probably will retain a lot of its value. Right. Just like surfaces are so much clean, so much cleaner. Um, like everything is just much cleaner. We're able to like, the lighting is really good in the container. Um, yeah, I just feel like we're just able to like see what's going on more clearly and actually like process and sort things properly. The, hang the high hoses are really great in the space. Uh, I really don't like having stuff lying on the ground. Um, you know, we have a salad, a spinner in the container. Um, I'm going to put in like, uh, I'm for next year, hoping to have the same guy fabricate a stainless trough that's like custom to that space with bubblers for the greens using your information. I mean, a lot of it is just organization, just like the way we kind of communicate about different orders and how things flow through the space is a big part of it. Um, pallets to keep things off the ground, dollies to wheel heavy bins around. Um, dirty produce gets stacked either on like this pallet or on the rack inside. There's like kind of three areas where dirty goes. And then um, after we harvest, we all come in here together and um, prepare the space, get our workspaces set up, fill the tubs, um, pull anything out of the cooler that we need to sanitize, wash tables, um, and then we just each, we you know, we all start washing. I use like um, Rob Rock's like label maker app from Upstream Ag to print all my wholesale labels. So those wholesale labels and pre-order labels all get kind of tacked up on these like restaurant strip. I don't know what we call those up there. So um, that each station kind of knows where they're, what they have to pack. And then we kind of just move through the produce. People work clean to dirty or, you know, non-aromatic to aromatic, depending on the tub. And then um, things get bagged, put into the cooler, sorted, boxed, and then um, dirty bins are left here to wash at the very end as part of cleanup. Um, and then, yeah, in cleanup, water's drained. It flows into either the trench drain out here or the sump, sump pit in there. And then there's a sump pump in there that as it fills, pumps the water across the road. Just because there's not much of an incline, we had to put in the pump. And that's been relatively problem free. Um, the first winter was really cold. It was a really cold winter and I did have 
Um, it froze, the f output froze. Um, cause I, I think because I used it on probably a really cold day. Um, so we've been a little more cautious about that. But we stopped using the outside space as soon as like the daytime temps are like not warming up um, and just blow out all the lines and just use the indoor space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I did have to like insulate, you know, we tried to insulate um, the sump pit and then like where the water comes into the container. And we haven't had any issues with that. Um, last year, the heat pumps failed while I was away and everything froze in there. So that was kind of a nightmare. How do you like working outside kind of under a pavilion? Yeah. As far as space w versus and weather. In yeah. Um, I like it. I mean, we've had a couple, like we had a really big, you know, it was a rainy summer. And so on the really big rainstorms, occasionally there's rain that blows in at that end. And we hang the shade cloth here for the sun because this is not oriented in the best way for the sun. It's really oriented in the best way for just our flow. Um, cause the morning sun will kind of, kind of come in from there. Does yeah. that help with wind and stuff too? A little bit. Yeah. The wind, we have a few really windy days in here, but the season hasn't been too bad. Usually it's the shoulder seasons and it's not terrible. Yeah. I like it. I mean, I think it's nice for flow. It's nice to be outdoors. Obviously we need to like deter birds and be aware of like bird activity. I mean, I still think having like a big indoor nice space would be amazing, but it just doesn't make sense. I mean, the other piece is that we're on a floodplain and while this is raised up a little bit, I mean, during Irene, this area definitely flooded and um, having a big like stick structure that has insulation in the walls is just like not a great idea, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the container, you know, it's, it, came, it was a refrigerated container, so it actually came with the stainless inside, like that. Um, and it's elevated off the ground, but that's why we elevated like the, um, the heat pump and stuff. The sum, I mean, the drainage I wish could have been different maybe, but I don't, I don't know if it could have been, you know? We were kind of limited. The walls to the, the, I've been in touch with Ed actually about this, but the walls that he put in, you know, between the cooler and the washroom and the washroom and the office aren't like super well insulated. So there's, you can see there's condensation on there. So I want to like figure, troubleshoot that this winter. We talked about putting another like door to the outside on the container, um, but mostly we use the big end doors for like when we have big stuff to move out. Um, I wish that I had a better system for like drying bins. We haven't figured that out. We kind of stack them wet, which I think isn't great, but I don't, we don't have like enough room to like yeah. really dry them. So no, it's been pretty good. I think I, the crew was like, when it first, you know, the people that made the transition from this space to this space were like, this is huge, you know? Oh. Um, now it's kind of like everyone, everyone who's here has only existed with this. So yeah, but I think it's generally a really nice space to work in. We can all talk to each other, that's cool. Um, usually I, I would go in the container and clean. The first thing is spray out the tubs, soap them down, rinse them. Actually, usually I sweep up any big stuff first. I'm kind of anal about not letting any, like trying not to let any debris get into the sump pit because it's just gonna, I need actually to probably have someone pump that out at some point. But so out here, first thing is rinse all the bins. We alternate soaping, like one week we'll soap the red bins, one week we'll soap the blue bins, um, stack the bins, sweep up the debris, wash surfaces and tubs and tools, <clears throat> pallets, sweep, the, do another sweep, um, do a preliminary wash of the floor and then do a final wash of the floor. The only thing I wish, that's one thing, they advised me against this, but like, I don't know what you see. This is obviously not, I can't remember what they call it because it's been so long ago, but just the finish of the concrete, it's rough. Broom finished, it's broom finish okay. versus like um, polished, yeah, or trial finish. Anyway, everyone was like, do not make it super smooth. It's gonna be a, like, it's gonna be dangerous. But it's like sweeping, Keegan joked about this one year. She's like, it's impossible to sweep like arugula on like, you know what I mean? Velcro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's like, I do, there's like a part of my like Virgo brain that wishes that this was like a nice smooth thing and sweeping it was just like, but, um, but this is safer and that's more important. <laughs>
I mean, we can just do more winter production. We now use our old cooler as like storage crops. So that's like our 50 to 55 degree cooler. So we just have more um, storage capacity. We store our tomatoes in that cooler. Um, we just move a lot more produce through. This has definitely allowed us to expand our winter production. And I think it's made our summer production a lot more like efficient. I think it's just we were able to accomplish more in the given amount of time. I mean, on big harvest, like wholesale days, like we harvest, pack and deliver on the same day, which is challenging, you know, but we get everything out of here, you know, by early afternoon. So yeah. and I think that's just like a function of the space being like user friendly. Right.